if you pay attention to the documentation. Uh, <coughs> the, the format is JSON, and in many cases, the JSON is really uh, the same as you would uh, expect from the Elasticsearch if, if you are using the Search API. And of course, is supported, of course. Uh, so what one of the goals that we, uh, we try to do with Search Cisco is that we want to allow the content, uh, content authors to really focus on the content and do not bother with the underlying technology because it can be quite complex, especially when it comes to full text search. You know, uh, it can provide you a lot of uh, features that uh, I will probably do not go uh, into all of these. But at some point, uh, when we want to provide simple API on top of something like Elasticsearch, uh, it does not work. So when the customers or users want something more complex, then uh, we are considering to uh, opening or allowing directly the Elasticsearch API instead of reinventing uh, the wheel. But it's, it's just, you know, uh, planned for future. And uh, one important thing is that uh, all of those technologies that are running uh, uh, behind the uh, search Cisco, uh, can be managed to can be hard to manage uh, as a, as a separate instances. For example, we will show you the, the list of all the technologies that are used in search Cisco. And one of the advantages, if you are using search Cisco, is that you do not have to bother with maintenance, upgrading, uh, you know, performance tuning of all those uh, individual components because that's something we try to do for you. Okay, and what's okay. The we have not yeah. <laughs> enough time because there are lots of features, so only some short introduction of other features. Uh, one uh, edit value service the search Cisco can provide for applications on top of its content writing. So you can write every content uh, stored in search Cisco by stars. There is some API for this. This API requires authentication, so this is another area we have to cover. Uh, using of some authentication mechanisms in search Cisco. Uh, another feature we have to solve is content persistence because uh, some content is hard to obtain later. Simply uh, some content you can grab at any time, but uh, it is not possible in all times. For example, some systems, external systems, do not provide API when you can grab content as you need. Uh, we have system where only RSS uh, is available, so we see, see only a few last blocks. And in this case, we uh, store the, the content persistently in search Cisco and because uh, and can later re-index it into search indexes, and we have this content uh, safe. Um, another part is pool indexers. It's complete technology of, uh, of, uh, of crawlers and crawling content from another system, so. Uh, maybe we can, we can skip it. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Something about technologies, uh, Search Cisco core is based on Java Enterprise Edition 6, so we use CDI, REST Easy for REST API, EJB, uh, for some persistence we use JPA, we run it on the top of EAP uh, 6.2 with clustering, so we suppose the search Cisco should be uh, deployed in clusters. We use Elasticsearch as, as base for uh, for the, all the search uh, functionality. JavaScript for some clients. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, search Cisco is OpenShift friendly, so it, it is easy to deploy it to the. OpenShift, we have documentation for it, and we use it as development uh, environment. So it, it's very easy to create your instance of search Cisco. And uh, last slide is about other than students. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. one, two. yes, one, Great. two. We want to, uh, uh, as part of the internship program, you should uh, try to help us to extend the search Cisco. You can do some bachelor or diploma thesis on it, so uh, this is opportunity for you. And yes, we have some time for questions, five yep. minutes. 
Uh, here are some useful links for source codes for such as code are on GitHub. You can contact us over emails and you can write uh, uh, provide us feedback from this talk on, on the link provided and it's time for questions. It works perfectly. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, we were, because uh, we wanted to open source the project, and part of the policy uh, within the Red Hat is that uh, you have to do some legal work first. And part of the legal work is that you have to come up with some name that is uh, trademarkable, trademarkable. So we had a couple of candidates that did not pass. And, and then, because Lukáš is yeah. from Rožnov pod yeah, it's, it's from <laughs> Valachia. And uh, it, I don't know, it was maybe, maybe Brian, Brian Fart, I don't know, but when I... Lots of slowly. Yeah, <laughs> when it appeared in my head, I jumped to the Google and I realized that there is simply no evidence of, of Sergesco in the whole world. So I was really <laughs> sure that it's an original, original, unique name. And yes, it was not a problem to pass the legal process. And well, I'm not sure if, how much you are familiar with Valachian language, for example. Because in Valachian language, typically when something ends with isco, I'm not talking about San Francisco, <laughs> but isco, like chlapisko or uh, stromisko or something like that, it, it, it really means that it strengthens the root of the word. And the root of the word in this case is search. So, search is you know, good search. Yeah. Um, and it's a good finish for our talk. Thank yeah. you for attending. By the way, if, you're, if you have a size of M or S, <laughs> or if you want a knife, <laughs> <laughs> you can have one. <laughs> Feel free to come and grab. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Um, okay. Thank you. Bye.